Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Sunday, August 20th, 2017 edition of VR News. Sadly, weekend drawn to a close, guys, but that's okay. We've got some VR news to talk about. We're also going to take a look at some games, pretty representative of the three big platforms. Games that either made a big splash because of a lot of pre-launch hype or got a lot of that publicity, for better or for worse, after launch. First of those we know is going to be a little controversial, at least it was for me, the Soul Keeper VR. So let's start there. Let me explain what I mean by controversial. What I mean by that, uh, let's just start and say Helm Systems, the developer for Soul Keeper VR, they've done nothing wrong. They've played within the established rules and guidelines for early access. Early access can run a range of possibilities. It can be the most extreme on one end, which is super polished, super tight, stable as all hell, decent amount of content, and what is there works and flows almost perfectly. To the other end of the spectrum, horribly unfinished, buggy as hell, etc. The true game state is usually somewhere in the middle. For me, while it wasn't on the extreme of being a buggy mess, it was closer to that end than I would have liked. Again, that is on me, no one else. I could have waited a day, six hours, hell, even 12 hours, to see other people's accounts and then base a purchasing decision on that. I didn't, I jumped the gun. That's what happens when you do that, right? you're going to get bitten some of the time. So still have confidence in this title that they can turn this into something really special. They're just not there yet. Next game, Tripwire Interactive's Killing Floor Incursion. Now it hasn't knocked Resident Evil 7 off its top spot for VR horror for me, but I had a hell of a lot of fun with this title. Despite the fact I use teleportation throughout the quick look that I uploaded the other day, I'd love to be able to tell you I did it on purpose to, uh, you know, give people who can only do teleportation because of motion sickness, but no. Somehow I got it in my head that that was the only mode available, read it, heard it, didn't verify it till I read the comments. Now, even more fun than it already was, highly can recommend this game. You're definitely going to enjoy it if you like horror VR. Last game, Paranormal Activity, also a horror game. This was initially available just on the Rift and the Vive. However, August 15th, just under a week ago, released for the PlayStation VR. Can also recommend this if you like horror games. The price, not bad either, $29.99 US. Actually the same price as it is with the discount on Steam right now if you were to buy it there. Next story, Ben Lang had a chance to check out Copen's Lightning OLED display technology at the recent E3. Well, they updated him with an actual hands-on model, which he was allowed to basically put through its paces. Here's his findings with that unit. Now, the first thing Ben stresses is the ELF headset isn't and will not become a product. And I'm mentioning this, and I'm sure Ben is mentioning this, because some of the features really aren't features, they're red herrings in a sense, because they're not representative of what a final product would look like. One of those is weight. This thing, a dream at 220 grams, i.e. super light. But that's because there's no tracking on board, there's no built-in audio, there's no IPD adjustments, all of that stuff just simply not present, but it would be in some future design where Copen puts their technology. Demo uses what's kind of becoming common now, several different cables tethering into a single. Here it's a display port adapter and a USB that terminates into a single cable with a USB-C end plug. Negatives been talked about, how noticeably dark the technology was. Copen attributed that to a non-finalized display. Okay, fair enough, but we're going to get back to that point. The field of view was only 70 degrees. Now, they did state that they are working on an 80 to 100 field of view. And Ben stated that the 70 degree field of view on this unit had a noticeable binocular effect and 
that that binocular effect was distracting two very noticeable darkish circles around his field of view. Now, let's talk positives. It's only one big positive that Ben mentions, but it is a big one, and that's the increased pixel density, which really is their main cell, 2048 by 2048 pixels over the 1080 by 1200 in some of the competition. That resulted in a noticeably and very stunning sharp picture. Well, it's probably going to be at least a year before we see this technology find its way into some kind of head-mounted display final unit, which kind of makes me wonder what the point of this was. Part of me kind of worries the fact that they're willing to show this technology at a stage where they're not really showing it off effectively. They've still got work to do on the field of view. This only had 70. They've got binocular effects. It's too dark. Sure, it's sharp, but what about all the other stuff? Uh, is it because funds are running low? Because it's probably not the most attractive thing to potential vendors and consumers when you're showing several really important features in such an unfinished state. So I guess we're going to find out as the months lead on whether we can expect this to start appearing in either technology we know or technology that hasn't quite made it to market yet. It'll be interesting to see. And our final story, this one obviously nerding it up for me big time, and that is the full total solar eclipse happening tomorrow, August 21st. And what makes this so special is really a trick of distance. And the trick is simply our moon, which is really, really tiny, especially when compared to the sun. In fact, put it right beside the sun, and it would be literally the size of a grain of sand in comparison, just super, super tiny. But because the moon is only 365,000 kilometers of it away versus the sun, so much bigger, but it 150 million kilometers away, they just happen to appear the same size. And it's really a fluke of distance that that's the case. If it had been a few tens of millions of kilometer closer or further, eclipses wouldn't be near as amazing or if the moon were bigger or smaller. So that leads us to the next bit. Where the hell can you see this? Well, if you are on this lucky band here and you can see it stretching between Oregon and the Carolinas, I think it's 14 states that it passes through, something like 140 or 150 million people within about half a day's drive to it. For example, where I am here, it can be seen, but we'll get to that at the end. And where I lived before in Vancouver, it can also be seen. But the main point of this is, if you don't live in an area that's close, they're not exactly rare. They happen about once every 18 months, roughly two every three years. So if you're in a place that's not going to have one for a while, well, you can check out this update for Google Earth VR launched August 12th. And it basically plunks you in a rural field somewhere in Oregon and allows you to mimic the total eclipse. And you get a rough approximation of what it would look like. Obviously not as awe-inspiring as seeing it in person, but still pretty damn cool. Of course, you can check that out via the Oculus Store or via Steam for both your Rift and Vive. Now, I was saying where I live, you can partially see it. Well, that band across the states is where you see the total, the totality of the eclipse. In other words, the moon completely obscures it except for the sun's corona, its atmosphere around it. If you're a little bit higher or lower, you're going to see degrees of that. For example, in Vancouver, where I lived, there's only a sliver over from it being a total eclipse, i.e. still going to look pretty damn cool. Here in Nova Scotia, the other way around, there's only a sliver obscured. So... Still kind of cool. You're going to see the two effectively collide, but not as impressive as in the other places. Just one last thing. If you are one of those people who are lucky enough to see this, remember to take precautions. A lot of people have permanent vision damage looking at the sun. It happens all the time, even though we're told as kids, don't look at the sun, Johnny. 
We do it anyways. Get the proper protection. Even if you're on that belt, the corona, that radiation, that light can still do a heck of a lot of damage. Guys, that is it for the Sunday edition of VR News. Hopefully you had a good weekend and a great week ahead of you. Guys, as always, cheers.